up next we have clauses. Clauses are very important because every sentence is made up of at least one clause. There are two different types of clauses and we are going to learn both of them. We have the independent clause and the dependent clause. They function very similarly, but they're very different in one key aspect and you won't want to mix these up. The easier one and the one that we see most often is the independent clause. It is independent because it does not need anything else in order to function as a sentence if you add end punctuation. In general, a clause is, is a group of words that has at a minimum a subject and a verb, but it doesn't have the rest of the elements necessary to form a sentence or to be a sentence in and of itself. So it's a group of words that have some components, at least a subject and a verb, but it's missing other components. As we learned, every single sentence, no matter how simple or how complex, needs at least five elements to be an official sentence. There are a lot of things that masquerade as sentences that are not truly grammatically correct sentences. We want to avoid that. Our independent clauses, they can stand on their own if you just put an end punctuation. If you slap period on there, your independent clause can be a sentence. Your independent clauses, your group of words that are not yet a sentence, consist of four elements. It is the first four elements we learned in the previous video. Those elements are a subject, a verb, an object, and a complete thought. Remember, our complete thought has two sub-elements of no unanswered questions and one main point. This is the basis of our independent clause. Notice that if we add one more element, the end punctuation, we can upgrade. We can upgrade this to a sentence, but we're not quite there yet. Adding the end punctuation stops anything else, any other clauses from binding to it. The independent clause, it's very social. It likes to invite other clauses over to hang out with it and to form a party, also known as a sentence. When we put it in punctuation, that blocks, that cuts it completely off. It builds this moat around it where no other clauses are able to join up with it. So the end punctuation is very official in its function. When we're dealing with just clauses, we never want to have the end punctuation because we want our clauses to get together. The clauses joining is how we add variety to our sentences is we mix them up. Sometimes we combine dependent clauses. Sometimes we combine independent clauses. We like to keep it interesting. Remember that interest is always should always be at the forefront of our minds when we're writing. We want to draw intrigue. We want our reader to be mesmerized by what we're saying and we don't want them falling asleep. So our independent clause can stand on its own. It has four elements, the subject, the verb. If it's academic writing, you need an object and a complete thought with its two sub elements. That is how you create an independent clause. Remember that at this stage here as beginners, we don't want to put anything before our subject. That is a much more sophisticated technique. And when you do that, you will often notice that you have created these very messy sentences accidentally and you don't know how and you don't know why. If you want to take a sentence and and you've already written it and you would like to transform it into a more simpler yet correct sentence try taking off anything before the subject and it is night and day it makes a huge difference and you will be very appreciative of the difference that that it makes nothing before our subject subject which is a noun or pronoun verb object, which is a noun or pronoun, 
and our complete thought. These four things together with nothing else, don't stick anything else in there, have these four in this order. So your three words and then your complete thought, which isn't going to be any words, right? Your um, two sub elements, they're just things that you mentally check off to make sure that they're done. So you have a fill in the blank here for a subject, a fill in the blank here for a verb, a fill in the blank for an object, and then you wanna check off two boxes that you've met, your complete thought, which is your no unanswered questions and one main point. With as little as three words, you can have an independent clause. This is all you need for one independent clause. Again, later we'll learn how to add in other words. You can stick other words before your object, you can stick other words after your object, and you can do that with your subject as well, words on either side. However, this is where people start to get messed up. So to start with, we're just gonna have, at a minimum, our three words. If you wanted to put one or two words, that's fine. Like you can say, I ate breakfast, and then you could say this morning, right? And that's completely fine. Two, maybe three words is fine, and it won't mess you up. You wanna make sure it's not a verb though. If you, if you do subject, verb, object, verb, and then more words, you've now almost added another complete independent clause, and we don't wanna do that at this point. We wanna stay, stay nice, and, nice and simple for right now. Subject, verb, object, complete thought, that is our independent clause. It is as easy as that. Independent clause, relatively, they don't cause a lot of trouble. However, their cousin, the dependent clause, causes a lot of confusion. Sometimes I have to stop and think about my, my dependent clauses and whether I'm putting it in the right place. If you have struggled with grammar or you've never, if you've never heard of dependent clauses or even independent clauses and you've never tried to put them in the structure, doing something that we've done on autopilot for so long, trying to back up and do them slowly, it's a bit, it's a bit of a funny process, but you'll learn a lot by doing it this way. So our dependent clause is very similar to our independent clause, but it cannot stand on its own. It cannot stand on its own. It is dependent. It is dependent on an independent clause coming along to attach to. So while the independent clause is like a lone wolf, the dependent clause is like the ultimate social butterfly and it just, it will not, it will not go to a restaurant. You will never see it eating alone. You will never see it functioning on its own. When it's alone, it just hangs out in its apartment by itself. The elements to our dependent clause are a little bit different. You want to make a note to not mix them up. You'll still have a subject and a verb. If you're writing for academics, you will still have an object. However, where things get a little different is with our complete thought. With a dependent clause, we will not have a complete thought. We will not have it. So the element is actually that you want an incomplete thought in the sense that you want an unanswered question. Another name for an unanswered question is, if you remember, if you back up just a tiny little bit, do you remember our subordinating conjunctions? Do you remember that one single word that, that posed a question, that, po that introduced an unanswered question? Words such as before, after, um, because, Right, I think my example was before I left for work this morning. So that single one word before posed an unanswered question. And in this group of words that is the dependent clause, before, and then I is the subject. So before is our subordinating conjunction, right? And this is why I said, if you add in words before your subject, you can often get yourself into a lot of trouble because you might accidentally introduce something that changes everything you're trying to do. So before is our subordinating conjunction, I is the subject, it's our pronoun, and then left before I, right? Remember our formula to find our object, before I did what? Before I left. And then for work are those two or three words that I said after, you can add them and it doesn't cause any kind of problems. 
So before I left for work goes with the object, right? And then we want to make sure that we have an unanswered question. We have a supporting conjunction that we've added, which is before, but we didn't answer the question. If we put a period right there at the end, we now have what is called a fragment, which we'll get into later, but we won't have a complete, we won't have a complete thought. There's no possible way to have a complete thought if you pose a question and you don't answer the question. If I just said before I went to work and if I improperly slapped a period at the end of this, it wouldn't make any sense, right? Before I went to work, it really does leave everyone who's reading to wonder, okay, before you went to work, what, did you have breakfast? Did you oversleep? Did you forget to take a shower? What happened before you went to work? So many things could happen, right? It just makes them, it just makes them guess. So it still has four elements, just like the independent clause, but this last element is the, is the complete opposite. So we still have a subject, we still have a verb. If it's academics, we still have an object. Remember, if it's not outside academics, you can, you can omit this altogether if you would like. It's your option. You can have the object or you can take it out and still be perfectly fine. Subject, verb, object, and an incomplete thought. An incomplete thought is when you have either more than one main point, if you just ramble on and on and on, or you have an unanswered question. Having the word before in my example gives us an unanswered question. It poses a question word, but doesn't answer the question. So those are the four elements to a dependent clause. We'll learn a little bit later how independent clauses and dependent clauses, how they come together with each other, um, how they function in a sentence, how they mess up sentences if they're used incorrectly. For right now, it's just really important to practice your independent clauses and your four elements and your dependent clauses, which also have four elements, but your last element is different. It's only the last element that is different between the two. So remember that our independent clauses are one clause and our dependent clauses are our second clause. There are two possible clauses. Independent can stand alone, dependent cannot. It cannot. It cannot stand alone because it poses an unanswered question. And remember I said that we always want to answer the question that we posed before we put our end punctuation on. So anywhere in that group of words, before we add our period or our explanation or our question mark, we need to answer that question. If we've answered the question, we don't have that fourth element met and it is not a dependent clause. What you likely have is a dependent clause attached to an independent clause. And at this point, we are gonna learn how to do that, but we're not learning how to do that yet. So as you practice, make sure that you keep them separate. Practice just your four elements with your independent clause and just your four elements with your dependent clause. Do not combine them just yet. That is how things start to go wrong. Right now, we're just practicing them individually. As a very quick review, we have independent clauses and dependent clauses. Independent clauses stand alone and have four elements. Dependent clauses cannot stand alone. They must attach to at least one independent clause, and they also have four elements. There are five elements required in absolutely any sentence. The most basic sentence, five elements is the minimum. Our, our clauses never have end punctuation ever, ever. If it has end punctuation, it is either a clause that has improperly been, been ended with punctuation or it is something else completely all together. Four elements remember memorize this is an instance where you do need to memorize memorize these four elements also please know that depending on who your teacher or your professor is they might teach these elements a little bit differently this is what works for me and what works for my students if you hear it a different way or if you see it a different way elsewhere the other way is likely it is not wrong it is just different hopefully all of your different professors or anyone else that you're going to to find this knowledge, hopefully we're all reaching the same conclusion, which is how to form 
clauses and sentences, how to pick out our different parts of sentences and our different parts of speech, even if we reach that end goal a little bit differently. So just know there are different formulas. This is just my own personal formula. Fantastic job. I know that clauses are not the easiest. We are progressively getting harder. Now it is time to do the quiz, to do the worksheet, and then to review your answers. Any questions on the quiz or the worksheet that you don't get correct, do them again, do them a couple times, watch the video, and make sure that you get 100% before you move on. Otherwise, there is a chance if you don't have this foundation knowledge that you might get confused as we move forward. Things will only get a little bit more challenging from here. Great job, and I will see you in the next module.